Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Irfan bin Abdul Muttalib and my metric number is TF200066. Others members will introduce themselves shortly after this. Uh, we are from Group 3, Section 7 for Highway Engineering. So, for our report, we need to select 1 km of road and at least find 3 distress on the road. For the introduction, do you know Malaysia has the third highest death rate uh, from road traffic accidents in Asia after Thailand and Vietnam? And according to Department of Statistics Malaysia, road accidents was the common cause of the death among men after isomic heart disease and pneumonia disease. And there were no changes in the statistics of Malaysia fatalities rate since 2007 until now. There are many reasons to road accidents such as speeding, driver negligence and other reasons. But for this report, we are focusing on the condition of the road which is one of the factors of the road accident. That's, that's why pavement condition in deaths uh, or can be called or can be called as PCI is widely used to measure the pavement. Uh, after this, my fellow friends uh, will explain about the pavement condition in deaths uh, in details in our literature review. So for objective for our report, uh, uh, we need to determine the condition of the pavement on the selected road. Uh, and then uh, perform pavement condition index PCI test and then uh, lastly propose the type of maintenance and rehabilitation needed to improve the condition of the pavement so that's all from me thank you hi assalamualaikum my name is Abu Afizuddin bin Abu Dard I want to present about the literature review first uh, what is pavement condition index or we know as PCI the pavement condition index is a numerical assessment based on the type and intensity of the distress seen on the pavement surface. It is determined by uh, observation during the inspection. The standard PCI rating scale is uh, 0 to 100, and which is 0 is the worst possible condition and 100 is representing the best possible condition. Okay, uh, we go to the maintenance and rehabilitation. After we done the PCI process, we got the scale of the distress. So it is show that we need to go, we need to do maintenance or rehabilitation. Uh, the process is to slow down or stop the deteriorating process. The act of fixing areas of an existing pavement to stop the deteriorating process is known as rehabilitation so as we can see the uh, this is a figure the first stage of MNR or maintenance and rehabilitation activities is preventive maintenance preventive maintenance is the process of maintaining pavement or on a regular basis in order to keep them running and avoid costly Next is a major rehabilitation. Major rehabilitation is a proper maintenance that offer extend pavement life. The example of uh, major rehabilitation is patch and overlay. Uh, lastly, the alpha pavement has reached the end of its service. Life when the black top surface is badly disturbed. So. Uh, this is the reconstruction uh, reconstruction stage. So we need to remove and reconstruct the pavement. Okay, for part methodology, the observation method that we use uh, is through the Google Earth and Google Maps. For the Google Earth, we use the to calculate the length and the width of the road Jalan Tambun. And for the Google Maps, we use to observe the pavement condition uh, to list out the distress, the type of distress and distress level. Okay, for this project, the road is one kilometer long and ten meters wide. Then uh, we divide uh, each sample hundred meter length and ten meters wide. That means we have 10 samples 
and then we only take five sample to calculate the PCI method. That is pavement condition index. Why we use uh, PCI, uh, PCI in, uh, method because we have to know the pavement condition survey. Then we list out the uh, distress level, the type of distress, and we put in the table. Then we calculate. Then we use the right graph for the dark value uh, to compute the total and density in percent to determine the dark value. Second step, uh, we want to calculate the maximum allowable numbers of deducts of deducts M for each sample after evaluating the distress and deduct value. Uh, the third step is to determine the maximum corrected deduct value CDV. To get the uh, the CDV value, we should refer to the graph total deduct value uh, in the ASTM PDF and finding the value the value of Q. The first step is to calculate uh, the pavement condition index for each sample. Lastly, each sample uh, we should uh, prepare for the summary for the report from the calculation we made. Okay, for data analysis, we list out the type of distress that have along the Jalan Taman Road. We have seven type of distress. The first one is alligator cracking, and it's also known as a fatigue cracking or crocodile cracking because uh, it describes an asphalt damage pattern that form that scales on an alligator skin. Uh, it is one of the most serious issues that an asphalt surface can encounter, especially uh, especially if it is left without fix. Because uh, if we do not remove and repair, uh, the cracking will continue to spread. The distress can occur due to the first is poor drainage, second is poor base. The, law, the last one is the traffic load is higher than the design limit. We continue to the second type of distress that we, we list out. The second is bleeding. When asphalt binder feels aggregate cavities during hot weather or traffic compaction, it extends over the pavement surface causing bleeding. Bleeding can also be caused by too much asphalt binder to bituminous material. It will loss of skid resistance and indirectly, it can uh, endangering other drivers. Minor bleeding can usually be fixed by bloating the excess asphalt binder with cause and with cause and, and excess asphalt can be chopped off with a motor grader or removed with a heated planner to stop major bleeding ok we move the we move to the third type of distress the third one is edge cracking uh, poor drainage and a lack of support at the pavement edge are the most common uh, cause to this sort of fracture as a result the underlying foundation materials settle, but settle and deteriorate Strong vegetation around the pavement edge as well as heavy traffic can cause edge cracking. The first step is uh, in resolving the issue is we should remove any vegetation growing close to the pavement edge and to address any drainage issues. Fill in the cracks to keep in to keep it from deteriorating further or remove it and rebuild it. The faults for the type of distress that we have along the road is patching. Uh, the patching is for the we use uh, we use that to fill in the potholes and or excavated places, poles and other pavement. This degradation should be repaired as soon as possible to prevent additional deterioration and costly pavement repairs. If we do not repair for immediately, it can cost uh, in the future for the pavement. 
Then there are various alpha patching procedures that can be used to mend cracks in roadways and pavements such as throw and roll method and semi-permanent pothole repair. For the fifth type of distress that we have is pothole. Uh, we have several uh, pothole uh, along the along the Jalan Tambun. A pothole is a depression in a road surface, typ uh, typically uh, asphalt, where shattered parts of pavement have been displayed by driving. Water in the underlying soil structure and vehicles moving through the affected area are the most common causes. Water degrades the underlying soil first, then traffic fatigues and cracks the areas weakly supported asphalt surface. Then, uh, for the six type of uh, for the six type of distress that we list out is shoulder drop off. A shoulder of pavement edge drop off is the road geometry floor in which the elevation difference between the traffic lane and its adjacent shoulder or between two travel lanes is more than acceptable. In adequate or incomplete highway construction or reconstruction, reconstruction sorry, frequently results in these types of edge drop, drop offs. Drivers especially those in uh, smaller vehicles such as compact compact cars and motorcycles as well as those towing a trailer are put in risk when the shoulder of pavement edge drop off is severe smaller vehicles might easily lose control when shifting from the road to the shoulder and the last one for type of distress that we list out is depression vehicle hydroplaning can be caused by depression which are small localized places that are filled with a significant amount of water to discover the root cause of failure a pavement depression should be studied the problematic pavement should be removed followed by excavating out and restoring the area of substandard subgrade and the last one we should cover the rip we should cover to repair subgrade with a patch okay i will explain about the data analysis calculation and the discussion on the results i have 10 samples and i only take five samples from the 10 samples and each sample has a uh, hundred meter length and 10 meters wide the name of the road that I take is uh, Jalan Tambun is located on the outskirts of Ipoh. Okay, uh, I, I, I will explain about the calculating on PCI. First, uh, first of all, you should list out the, the type of distress and uh, you should know the, the the distress level if alligator cracking is low then you put 01 l if it's bleeding the type of distress is bleeding then you put is 02 if the bleeding is medium uh, then you should put 02 m then you should calculate the area or the length or the uh, the length area and the numbers of the pothole if you have the pothole on uh, along the road then after we total the area or the length or the how many pothole that you have uh, you should calculate the distress density uh, the formula of distress density is uh, 100 times total sample length then uh, after you calculate the distress density you can find the you can find the deduct values from the graph, which depends on the type of distress. Uh, if the if you want to find the deduct values for alligator cracking for low, then you should refer to B twenty figure B twenty 
for alligator cracking then you should match uh, if low is low uh, you should refer to the line uh, on the graph then after you calculate the uh, if after you find the deduct value from the graph uh, we should find the maximum allowable number of deduct value Okay, next uh, you should find the maximum allowable number of deduct value that is mean uh, that is m sorry so based on the table uh, we can find the height value of deduct value and that will be the hdv that mean highest deduct value then we put in the formula uh, formula of m that is uh, maximum allowable number uh, the formula is 1 plus 9 divided by 98 and times 100 minus HDV then after you get the answer uh, you should list out the total number of deduct values uh, in this scanning order from the big numbers to the, the, the to the small numbers and small number and the last number in the arrangement will multiply by value of decimal point maximum of uh, decimal point of maximum allowable number of deducts if example if you get the answer of m is 8.36 uh, 8.36 and the last number of in your arrangement is 4 then uh, you multiply the last number 4 and the decimal point value is 0.36 then 4 times 0 0.36 uh, 4 uh, uh, 0 1.44 for the last number arrangement that will be the answer of the last number in your arrangement ok next uh, we should find the maximum correct deduct value that is CDV we should know how many numbers uh, numbers of deduct values is greater than 2 then we put uh, we put it as a Q and then we, sh uh, we should uh, calculate the total of deduct value and fill in the table and we should fill in the, uh, the numbers of deduct values in the table and then uh, we reduce the smaller indi individual deduct value to 2 and determine the CDV repeat until Q reaches 1 ok from that example we have uh, 5 uh, 4 3 2 1 ok for the first row we put 5 4 3 2 1 and then the second row we put 5 4 3 2 2 the third row we put 5 4 3 2 2 also and then we uh, for the third for the fourth we uh, we put 5 4 2 2 2 uh, and then we continue until uh, uh, until we uh, until uh, first column and then we put uh, the last row in the table as a Q1 and then uh, uh, up the last second last row we put as a Q2 and and continue until which until the first row in the table and then we should refer to after we uh, we put uh, the Q uh, in each row and we should refer to figure B45 to know the CDV from that uh, we know which row that have that has a maximum CDV from that we can we can calculate the PCI the PCI the formula of PCI is uh, PCI equal to 100 minus maximum CDV the maximum CDV we can get from the table that we calculate uh, before then uh, we from that after we put the maximum CDV in the formula under minus uh, something and you get the PCI for uh, the PCI number for the road that we calculate
So you uh, from that you know the standard PCI uh, for the each sample that you uh, you calculate. Then you can make the uh, sentence uh, that my sentence is based on the rating for PCI value of blah blah blah. The station of payment is in that if uh, my uh, you should know if 55 uh, around 55 until 70 the pavement session is in uh, rehabilitation uh, or fair so that's all for the uh, data analysis calculation and discussion on the result uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is Abdullah Zaki bin Zubaidi my metric number is DF200084 so we continue with uh, our presentation with discussion on maintenance Rehabilitation involves making structural exchange to pavement load carrying capacity and extending its service life. The average rehabilitation project lasts 10 to 20 years. Rehabilitation is less expensive than rebuilding, yet it still requires a substantial investment. After that, we've con we continue with Rehabilitation method should be need to improve the PCI. First, full depth patching, which is it to restore structural stability, defective section of pavement is replaced to the level of the pavement or below. Second, structural overlay, which is it over a pavement surface, one or maybe more layer of tree plus alpha concrete are put to repair or enhance its load bearing cap capability. This is most often produced using hot mist alphard concrete, although it may also be done with alphard grinding and a chip seal. Third, all mat, which is on low volume road, this treatment consists of three until five layer of big and tiny aggregate applied individually similar to a chip seal to restore structural friction and surface sealing for the fourth method is leveling cost a thin coating of bitumen which is less than two inch thick is applied over a pavement surface to restore the road crown and cross section as well as it fill rut which is it to protect the pavement and prevent water infil infiltration. This technique is often applied before a chip seal. Lastly is grind. The old alphabet is removed and replaced with a fresh layer of alphabet after grinding, where existing grade must be preserved, such as curb and gutter street. This technique is often employed. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Muhammad Dina Izwan bin Ahmad Fairuz. My metric number is 200087. Now I'm going to continue the presentation for the conclusion. As a conclusion, the PCI is very important to be practiced because a visual examination of the pavement surface can yield useful information. Data from, from visual inspection can be used to assess existing pavement condition forecast further I'm sorry forecast future pavement performance and calculate repair costs the PCI rating is not a direct assessment of structural capacity skid resistance or road roughness rather it is an objective instrument for evaluating the M and R demands of a roadway section in relation to an overall paving system. That's all from me. Thank you.